Hello and welcome to the second video of this three-part series on money and your nervous system. Today we're going to get into how to unlock your body's upper limits so that you can increase your capacity to receive, hold, and manage larger quantities of money. And I'm doing this series to give you a taste and to prepare you for what's inside Next Worth, which is my seven week live journey on embodying prosperity to become a magnet for money and miracles. And I decided to do this particular class, the second video for the podcast, since it's gonna be teaching you very specific tools, I thought it would be super practical. And in Next Worth, we're gonna be incorporating somatic practices, hypnotic meditation, creative exercises, ritual magic, and the really practical action steps so that you can feel safer and more confident receiving, holding, and managing your finances joyfully. What joyfully means is that you're not preoccupied with the worry it's going to run out. You're not walking around stressed and contracted. You're not feeling like an imposter and that the money that you're building is a fluke. Really, it works at the identity level, right, of receiving, of being someone, becoming the person that can receive larger quantities of money. And, you know, just really looking at the whole body, the whole system of a person and that person's particular, your particular ancestry, right? So this is perfect. Like I designed this experience for people who are first gen wealth builders, who are making good money and who are finding themselves at sort of like a little bit of an internal impasse with jumping into that next level, like shifting into the next gear, you know, and, and just, you know, even if you are at that next gear, I want to feel safe, right? Just feeling like that. I just want to feel like I can like let myself just fully take it in, you know, and if money mindset work has fallen short of your needs and expectations, if you're wanting to experience that cellular level change through hypnotic, somatic, magical practices, and also balance it with the practical steps of building tangible prosperity and generational wealth, you're going to want to take advantage of this unique offer. And I've included the link to the information page in the description. And of course, you can reach out to me directly if you have other questions. So in the first video, I laid the foundation of ancestral money trauma and shared, you know, how the different four different levels of trauma live in the body and how accessing internal states of safety and prosperity changes your money game. So again, magnetism to money and opportunity is activated by an internal sense of safety. And I want to emphasize again that you have to like, you have to understand that the sort of the, the granular quality of this and the nuance that the experiences around a lack of safety are very subtle and we are often unaware of them, right? They're unconscious. We don't see or detect it. It's been part of our identity, way of being, right? And that's the reason why body-based awareness is so important because if you're just dealing with the conscious, you're just dealing with a, just a small portion of that awareness. And it is through the body that we can really access a deeper level. So the expansion of your income, it mirrors your expanded nervous system, right? When you're stressed about money, you're contracted. It makes it harder for you to receive, right? Just think about being stressed and hunched forward and not being just open, like open chested, arms stretched out, ready to receive, right? And what's really important here for you to understand is that when your body is feeling unsafe, when there is an activation in your nervous system, it moves right from the body to the mind. So state, the state that your body is in, informs the story. 80% of your experience is, is information moving from body to brain and 20% is from brain to body. And that is part of the reason why mindset doesn't work, why you still, you're, you're doing it, you're feeling frustrated and stuck, 
you know, it's not taking into account, like it's, it's doing something, but you have to complement it. Like ideally you complement the body work with the mindset work. And then you have sort of a full spectrum targeted, you know, uh, steps to, to basically change your money identity, um, your level, your internalized levels of prosperity. So, when the nervous system is activated, right? When there is the most subtle activation of, ooh, ooh, that's unfamiliar, right? It leads to having specific emotions, right? And the emotions, all emotions are, are a cocktail of sensations, right? Each emotion has its own blend and mixture. And we label some as anxious, we label some as fearful, but it's more much more complex than that, as I shared with the first video that you can access on my YouTube channel. Um, you know, it's much more complex because there's collective aspects to these sensations. There are epigenetic aspects to these sensations. And your brain wants to be congruent with the body. It wants to make sense of things. So it comes in to fill, the, fill in the story, right? You know, it is, um, it wants to make meaning of the emotional sensation because you want to feel like it, it wants to make sense. It wants to, to build some sort of congruence, right? For example, um, you know, I can, I, when I get angry, right, you can get angry and there's a cascade of sensations in response to a particular trigger. I experienced something this past week where I knew I was in a trigger and I knew not to respond to the situation because I knew that I was coming from a story that my brain was making about it because I was in a little bit of overwhelm. And when I am in overwhelm, my response is to push people away. And I push people away with my words, right? <laughs> when we're in overwhelm, we push money away, right? Sometimes we say things that push money away, but sometimes our actions push money away. So that is just... Um, Right. So I'm just talking about anger, right? There's a cascade of sensations in response to a trigger, right? There was something was awakened from my past, right? Body goes into fight or flight or freeze mode, whatever it decides to do, right? Based on what was helpful for you back in the day or back in your ancestors' day, right? And then the thoughts tell the story, right? Oh, he's this, they are that, she's this, right? It tells a story or even the story about yourself, right? Whether it's like imposter phenomenon or anything like that. And these thoughts repeated over time become beliefs, right? They're just repetitions and repetitions of belief that get sort of solidified in the body. And your ability to create the life that you want is dependent on your nervous system's ability to feel safe, and available, and that's going to be dependent on, of course, your past experience, epigenetics, but it's also going to be dependent on repeatable practices that you can use to manage those emotions and sensations when you don't feel safe, right? And every person will do this differently based on their, you know, how they process emotions, right? There's no one right way. And one thing that I wanted to share here that I, I'm going to show you some ways to manage emotions and sensations, right? Like how you can use them to your benefit, use them to expand your capacity. But something that I failed to mention in the first video that I think is really important and why, why hypnotic pieces are um, critical to, to money work is because most of what we absorb, right? Most of the stories we absorb we absorb them in a theta brain state. So from, from age, from zero to seven, right? Zero to six, zero to seven, we are making associations around, about the world around us. And in this theta brain state, like we, it's just really all about associations. We're very suggestible, right? We're very, we're in a hypnotic state. <laughs> you know, we're not really so, like verbally focused and we are absorbing all of these associations that we see and we experience in our families of origin, in our community, in our culture and society. And then you add to that 
the ancestral stuff, right? Add to that the epigenetics that you sort of come in with biologically just by being born, right? Then you experience the whole associations, suggestibility stuff. And that then gets, that that is all baked into your nervous system, right? And that's why emotions are so important is because, you know, the or why the hypnotic work is so important is because we need to access some of those associations and sort of like pull them apart, tease them apart, like undo them, right? Because they're like, they're two things that are not associated, right? Like money and evil, not associated, not associated, but so baked into the system that we have to begin to just untangle some of those things and then feel our ways and sensate our way into a new reality. So, you know, there's lots of different examples of nervous system set points. One of them is, you know, maybe your set point is that you only earn, you know, a certain amount of money. Maybe it's like $150,000 or $200,000 a year and you want to get to that half a million dollars. Maybe that's your goal and that's okay, right? And and so that would be like a nervous system set point. Why, why 150 or 200,000? That's sort of where you're plateauing. Well, that might be sort of a, a a safe place. You know, you can still like, you know, your family is like, good with it. But what happens if you did make half a million dollars? Would they think like, oh my God, like, is she, you know, what? who does she think she is now, right? Well, what is she, what is she trying to prove? Like all the, we are often concerned, right? Our attachment system is concerned about what other people think, right? Identity is also impactful. If you don't believe yourself to be someone who can make multiple six figures, for example, your nervous system will be a no to that and will find ways to move away from that if you were to get close to that goal. So your identity beliefs affect your frequency as well. So we update the nervous system set point by signaling to the body that you are safe, right? How do we do this? We give ourselves the experience of safety through regulation, right? Somatic practices. And we basically work with the range of regulation. And that is the range of capacity and resonance as well, right? So we're expanding that place where we can like hold things without getting overwhelmed, without going into freeze, right? So we're slowly building it out. And this allows us to take a conscious to 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 make conscious actions to take conscious actions and to to make conscious responses when we feel unsafe versus just reacting to things or just blindly unconsciously like engaging in those same behaviors as though we were in a loop because we are essentially in a loop we sort of like we want to expand and then we're our body's like nah i don't think so and we come back to the comfortable place right so regulation is what we do to feel safe. And there are some people who criticize the word regulation because it comes from the word rule, which means like dominance. That's not how I mean it at all. I'm just using the word because it's just like, it's kind of what everybody understands. Um, For me, it's like management because, you know, sometimes I get into, I have moments where I feel scarce too. And it's like, it's all made up. Like, I'm just really like looking around. It's like, am I? No, actually. But, you know, I notice, I notice when it happens. Right. And I kind of bring myself back to that sense of safety. So some examples of what dysregulation looks like. Sometimes we go into anxiety about money. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed by the thought of investing money or taking taking a specific risk. Um, sometimes it creates difficulty with being fully present with our focus, or we have trouble taking action, right? And when we are out of range of our capacity, we either go into a hyper or a hypo response, right? The hyper, like I said in the other video, is the more anxious difficulty with presence focus. And the hypo is more of a little bit of a freeze, avoidance, trouble taking action, kind of like stuck feeling, right? And different situations with money will will 
create these different experiences in the body. Um, so, so yeah, so one of the examples of a way, you know, to metabolize stress, to metabolize anxiety is to shake, right? And in the animal world, you've probably heard this example a million times that when, you know, shaking is a natural response that we have to close stress loops, to work off the adrenaline cycle and to close out any stress loop. But we often don't, we remain rigid. We sort of like, we tense up instead of like surrendering to whatever's happening in the body. And we sort of stay stiff. That's how we sort of learn to be in our bodies is, is stiff and rigid. And by shaking, we are able to like manage, like it can be shaking, it can be moving of all different kinds, but that helps us return to safety. Um, and of course, dysregulation can happen um, with events that are stressful, sort of in the, in the, sort of the negative side of things, like, you know, having to pay a bunch on your taxes that you weren't expecting or having a, a you know, a surprise, unexpected expense that you're like, oh, fuck, you know? Um, and they, there can be like stressful events, like your body experiences them as, as stressful, even though they're wonderful, such as increasing your income, having a whole bunch of people, like, you know, getting in front of a whole bunch of new, um, you know, potential clients, um, having people excited about working with you, having a bunch of people join your program, like all of those things can create this nervous system overwhelm. And then we might do something or say something that pushes people away. So shaking is one of the examples. Any type of movement is great as long as we're sort of um, taking specific, um, doing it in a specific way, which I will share in a moment. But the point of all of this is <laughs> you can't talk your way out of the way it feels, right? Sometimes talk therapy helps, right? Sometimes talking it out does help, but you can feel your way through integration and into safety, right? Behaviors are caused by feelings, not logic, right? Yes, we can take specific actions, but most of the time we're behaving from from an unconscious place. I would, I think the statistic is like 90% of the time we're behaving from an unconscious place. So whatever, whatever is unfamiliar to your system will be labeled unsafe. So I think that that's something that I really want you to take home from this video is that whatever is unfamiliar, it's unsafe. So it doesn't have to be even like a big deal. It just has to be unfamiliar and your body's like, alert, alert, you know? Um, and they may be something like, you know, financial goals are events that we've never experienced before. You know, like, again, if you're the first generation in your family to earn a specific income level or to, to make certain financial moves, it's going to feel a little bit like unfamiliar. It's going to be like, well, I can't go to my parents to ask about this, you know, and you're having to do kind of your, you're basically breaking new ground. And you may not be where you want to be yet. Like I said earlier, if you want to make those half a million dollars and you're at, you know, 150,000, you, you know, you're already moving towards a life, an income potential that's different from your family of origin, right? Maybe they have beliefs about money and they're questioning why you even have these income goals. So expansion makes your nervous system freak out because it's out of the range of what's familiar, what you've been taught to want, what you've been taught to expect, what's known, what's comfortable, what's safe, right? It's as simple as that. And the solution always is to expand your range of capacity. And this happens slowly over time, right? It's almost like every time we go into the system, we push the boundary a little bit more, a little bit more. We stretch it a little bit more. I want you to think of it as, as this space that you're slowly stretching again and again and again, making bigger. And that is what helps you become a magnet, right? Because imagine like you're pushing your arms out and you end up with your arms out here, like wide outstretched. It activates your receptivity. Your antennas are out. You're ready to receive, you know? So I want to I wanna show you some, some quick and easy tools. Like let's say um, this is not something that we're going to be doing in the in the in next worth, but I wanted to share it with you anyway. Um, it's called Havening. 
So let's say you are having anxiety about the money running out. Um, and you're just freaked out because you're having some expenses or you're, you're purchasing a course or whatever, right? You're purchasing a car, maybe a, like a big item. And you're just like, oh my God, I'm not going to have anything left or just worrying about it. And, you know, your bank account is okay. You're, you're actually fine. Right. But your brain is telling you, you're not fine. So part of what you do is you begin to touch your body. You notice the sensations of, of what's happening in your body. Just keep your awareness there and just notice it, not judging it, not trying to label anything. And you begin to maybe touch your arms, moving down from the shoulders to the elbows, touching your face, right? I don't like to touch my face, but some people like to do that. It can be very calming and rubbing your hands together, right? Rubbing your hands together. Let's just do rubbing your hands together and moving your arm, hands from shoulder to elbow, right? So I want you to, as you're doing this, I want you to notice the sensation of being touched, but also being the one who is touching, right? So focus on the sensory experience. And I want you to deepen into the present moment. Allow yourself to breathe into your belly as you are feeling, maybe slow yourself down. So it's a, this is a great exercise to do in the situation that I mentioned, but it's also great to do when you are preparing to do your taxes or you know checking your bank accounts or creating a budget, anything that could possibly activate a hyper or hypo arousal, as subtle as that may be. Um, and while you're doing this, right, like over time, the behavior, right, this checking your bank account or doing the difficult things are no longer going to be a threat because it, because it's associating it with feeling calm, with feeling regulated, right? And so we're creating a new experience around this unfamiliar and scary thing. So the activity enters, begins to enter your range of capacity and thereby, boom, you've, you've currently updated your, your operating system to be, okay, checking my bank accounts is now not a big deal or making a bigger purchase is now no longer a big deal, right? So the second thing that I wanted to share with you is like tapping into source energy, which is what we're going to be doing through in next worth through the ancestral work, right? And through like just digging into the truth that's in your body, right? Through ancestral work, but also just like, even if you didn't access your ancestors, even if that didn't work for you, we would do it through the body. It's all already right here. So tapping into source energy is the easiest way for you to feel safe um, and to be in the reality that you are safe, right? For example, we may freak out about additional expenses that we have and things like that. And, you know, one thing that really helps for me is it's like, kind of like, is doing a reality check. Like, am I, am, are my basic needs being taken care of? Like, do I have enough food to eat? Yes. Do I have a roof over my head? Yes. Are there immediate the rest in the environment, no, they are not. I am fine, right? And, you know, I connect with my ancestors. I feel them surrounding me. I feel held. I feel like, you know, I, I yesterday I had like a little car accident and I am like, yes, it was super annoying. The guy was very angry at me. He was yelling at me. And, you know, coming away from that accident, I'm just like, okay, there must be a really good reason this is happening, tapping into source energy is for me in that moment, or this example is like, I'm sure the universe is conspiring in my favor. I'm so curious and I'm waiting to be delighted by, you know, what is to, what is to come from this experience, right? So that can be tapping into spiritual energy, tapping into source energy through your ancestry, right? Again, signaling safety, taking yourself like rooting rooting back into a sense of safety. The third the, th the third thing I want to share with you is really the process of moving through the emotions, like the emotional management or emotional regulation side of things. And this is sort of what I use um, pretty much on a daily basis to just manage my feelings because I'm someone who has a lot of feelings and I'm sure you are too. So 
for me, it is just like checking in, checking in, checking in all the time, body listening, tuning in, um, you know, noticing, right? And so for me, it's like, I'm constantly checking in when I'm having conversations with people. I'm just kind of noticing, taking the temperature of my nervous system. Like, is it kind of like, oh, uh, nervous over here? Or is it like, Ah, does it feel really like chill and open and relaxed? And if it's on the nervous side, I get really curious and I attune to where the fear is. I ask myself, where is the fear? And then sometimes that comes with a story. Sometimes it comes with no story and it's just pure fear. And I'm like, okay, so let's be with the fear. Let's attune to the fear. Let's lean into the discomfort of feeling that fear. Okay, this is not for the faint of heart, as you might imagine. And sometimes I feel just fear, period, no story. It's just kind of like, ah, my body is just freaking out. And I go to my, my stationary bicycle at the gym, or I go for my morning walk, and I'm feeling that discomfort. And at the same time as I'm doing that, I'm also doing something that regulates my body, that calms my body. And I'm feeling the fear and calming my body, feeling the fear and calming my body. And that, right, like surrendering to the emotion, being that observer and not getting lost in the story, let's say there is a story, and not getting lost in the story uncouples the sensation in your body from the fear story, which is like, wow, wow. If I could like, if you could take anything away from this video, it would be that by simply observing and letting that, letting the thoughts kind of run their course while doing the calming activity in the body, that will return you to a new set point. That is like my secret sauce of emotional regulation and management and expansion. That's it. I just gave it to you. So that's basically the point of ne next worth. That's really the point of, um, you know, doing that deep embodiment work so that you have the real results instead of like, you know, the having to do the mindset, mindset, mindset every day. Like my mindset work now is just like, it's like, an, it's no big deal because the embodiment work is, is so much more powerful that the mindset stuff is like, I don't even like write stuff down or anything. I'm kind of like a lazy mindset person. It really is about the embodiment, about the holding it in your body. I'm like so ready, so open, right? It's just a given right? There's no having to like work at it. So next worth really solves a problem of capacitation around trauma healing and connecting the spiritual with the material, right? It solves a problem of trauma at various levels, right? At the personal level, but also at the epigenetic level. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I'm excited about the third video and I'm not even sure what it's about, but I'm excited to share it with you. So um, I hope this episode was helpful. And again, like love to hear from you about what your thoughts are. Big love.